Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sinai. Welcome to this special evening of music here at our home at Sinai Temple. I'm Cantor Marcus Feldman, and it is my pleasure to welcome you here to Sinai. Tonight's event is made possible by the Department of Music at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music, the Lowell Milken Center for Music of American Jewish Experience at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music, and the Sinai Temple Music Department, underwritten by generous donations to our Sinai Temple Music Fund. And I'd like to acknowledge the chair of our music committee, Jane Cohen. Thank you so much for being here and for all of your support. Thank you, Jane. And I'd also like to thank many individuals who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make tonight's program come together. Our wonderful Sinai Temple Program and Engagement Coordinator, Amanda Harrison, who has been here. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Rebecca Small, Sinai Temple's Director of Operations. We'll save the applause as a long list. <laughs> Thank you, Roy Regev, Sinai Temple's Director of Media and Communications. Um, Ashley Soltis, my Administrative Assistant. Benjamin Fingerhut, Sinai Temple's Music Director. And the entire Sinai Temple Administrative Staff, Security and Maintenance Teams working behind the scenes. Um, also to Christopher Princevelli and also to Steve Cohen. Thank you so much for being our audio team and a special welcome and thank you to our many talented performers who are going to be performing this evening. It's a privilege to be here with you as we explore the depth and diversity of Jewish music through the compositions of our very own David S. Lefkowitz. David's remarkable journey as a composer, music theorist, and esteemed professor at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music, along with his family's deep ties to our community, truly embodies the essence of what we will experience tonight. His works, celebrated worldwide and shaped under the mentorship of Pulitzer Prize winning composers, invite us to ponder the profound age old question of what is Jewish music? In his program notes, which you can see in front of you, and if you did not have access to get a program, I encourage you to scan the QR code. Uh, the QR code is outside, um, or if your friends have it here, you can do that as well, and we will have that online as well. Um, for those who are watching live and later on. In his program notes, David navigates the rich spectrum of Jewish music, from liturgical pieces deeply embedded in our tradition to compositions that draw upon Jewish themes, regardless of the composer's background. Tonight's concert beautifully illustrates this spectrum, featuring liturgical works such as A New Song, Prayer Before Sleep, and Le Dor Vador, alongside Tipot, a poignant response to the October 7th massacre in Israel, and a selection of instrumental compositions that include a klezmer-inspired prelude and fugue. Through these pieces, David invites us to engage with the diverse expressions of Jewish music, honoring both our heritage and the broader thematic explorations of Jewish identity. Thank you for joining us for this very special evening. And please join me in welcoming David S. Lefkowitz.
ולנצח נצחים, כדושתם, ולנצח נצחים, כדושתך נרגיש, ולנצח נצחים, כדושתך נצחים, כדושתך נרגיש, נרגיש. Now, please join me in welcoming to the Bima, David S. Lefkowitz. Please join us, David. <laughs> David, it's an absolute pleasure to officially welcome you to your Bima. You're here every Shabbat. You're here supporting our music program. I hear you're actually on the committee that hired me to be here, so thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Really do. This, was the, the, uh, see. this was the condition of his employment. <laughs> that was 12 years ago. 12 years ago. He's yeah. finally paying up. <laughs> so, David, it's, it's such a privilege to, to finally celebrate you and your music, and I wanted to have a little bit of a discussion here and a little bit later on what it means to you to be a composer of Jewish music. So, it's a good question. Um, we've spoken, first of all, about what it means, uh, what the, the term Jewish music means. I'm not going to go through it. I talk about some possible answers in the, in the program. I will say, though, that uh, my earliest musical memories, uh, other than my sister playing flute, were synagogue music and my father sitting in his chair in the living room listening to Bach. So those two uh, uh, influences actually can be heard sometimes explicitly, sometimes less explicitly in this program. First of all, the, the first three pieces, the, the last two pieces are intended for, um, for children's choir. Um, but the, the first three pieces are meant to be synagogue music. Uh, the last three pieces for choir could be synagogue music, but in the middle uh, I have four uh, instrumental pieces or mostly instrumental pieces. Um, shall I skip ahead and tell about the, uh, the one that you're singing on? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so this, act, this is where you can hear the influence of Bach. If you know his music, uh, among the things that he's most famous for are his preludes and fugues. Yes. He's written two, he wrote two books of preludes and fugues and many others for uh, organ, for keyboard of various sorts. Uh, so I decided to follow in his footsteps and the footsteps of Mendelssohn and Shostakovich and Indemith and others. And I wrote a, a set of, well, two sets of 13 each, 26 preludes and fugues, which range in style from uh, very atonal to quite tonal. But the thing that, that links them all together 
And this is part of what's been percolating in my brain since going to synagogue as a little kid and listening to Bach in the living room, is the idea of different modes or scales. So you talked about a klezmer prelude and fugue. So David Kaplan, Professor David Kaplan, who is way in the back over there, um, will play one of, my, one of my two klezmer preludes and fugues. Um, and you should be able to tell pretty much right away that it's a klezmer piece. Uh, but it begins with a, essentially a Hasidic nigun. A nigun is a Hebrew word for, for tune. And in Hasidic practice, a rabbi would start to sing this and everybody would join as a way of warming you up. So this is a warming up. Uh, and then it goes to what is better Jewish music than, than wedding music. Of course. <laughs> uh, so we have a hora and a freilich, um, which do the things that horas and freilichs are, are supposed to do. But the nigun, um, as part of my agenda of breaking the piano, is... Uh, the nigun starts vocally, so you sing, um, and you do a wonderful job singing. You get into that Hasidic frame of, frame of mind, and there's, I think, two, uh, two paintings in the, in the program. I don't know if they're in, in color or black and white. Uh, the first one is called the, 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 the Rabbi with a Red Beard or something like that, um, and so you have to emulate the Rabbi with a Red Beard who's bringing us into exactly bringing us into practice. Um, Can you yes. tell us about uh, our next piece, Tipot? So the next piece is a response to the attacks of October 7. And Tipot is the Hebrew word which means drops. So it could be drops of rain, drops of blood, drops of tears for all of the lives lost. Um, and so there's, here if you can hold that, um, there are all of these very slowly descending lines, and when they reach the bottom, a new line enters at the top, and they're all always descending. But at various points in time, they sort of coalesce into different melodies. And uh, I talked about some of my earliest memories. We went to Israel in 1973, came home with cassette tapes. Remember those things? <laughs> cassette tapes of, uh, of Israeli folk melodies. And those come out in this piece. So uh, it coalesces into some folk melodies or melodies that I think many of you will recognize. It can be a little bit hard to catch, but after you catch it, it can't be uncaught. You realize, wow, there's, there is that melody embedded in the tears. We are looking forward to the world premiere of the exactly. Thank you.
Ata echad v'shim cha echad. Ata echad and your name is one. You are one and your name is one and there is none like your people Israel. And your name is one, and there is none alike. Your people, Israel, a people unique on the earth. A garland of glory have you given us a garland, a garland of glory, a crown of salvation, a day of rest, and a Abraham, Yagel, Isaac, Hey! 
The seventh day is a palace in time with a kingdom for all, a garland of glory, a crown of salvation. It is not an interlude, but the climax of living. The Sabbath is not for the sake of the weekdays. The weekdays are for the sake of the Sabbath. It is a day of rest and holiness, a day that ennobles the soul. space can say in its broken language of things, playing symphonies upon the instruments of isolated beings, unlocking the earth and making it happen.
I rejoiced when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet stood firm inside your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem is built as a city. The tribes of the Lord who give thanks to the name of the Lord. A city to which tribes would make pilgrimage. The tribes of the Lord who give thanks to the name of the Lord. Thank you all so much, Mazalto, David Lefkowitz, and good night. Thank you so much.